Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Phase Noise Fundamentals. In this presentation, we'll provide a basic technical introduction to phase noise, the effects of phase noise, and how phase noise is measured and analyzed. Phase noise is a common oscillator measurement, so we'll start with a short overview of oscillators. An oscillator is a device that generates a signal at a given frequency. Oscillators are a critical component in many electronic devices, and it's not uncommon for a single RF device to have multiple oscillators. For reasons we'll discuss shortly, the frequency or phase stability of the oscillator is very important. Ideally, we want the oscillator output to be as stable as possible. As you might imagine, all real-world oscillators do, however, exhibit some amount of frequency or phase variation. And although there are ways to minimize this variation, it can never be completely eliminated. Some level of instability is usually acceptable, but excessive frequency instability can create serious problems in many applications. Therefore, it's important that we have some way to accurately quantify or measure this level of instability. Although oscillators are often one of our primary concerns, other components or devices in the signal chain may also introduce undesired variations in the frequency or phase of the signal. The output of an ideal oscillator is usually a purely sinusoidal signal, which we can describe mathematically as Vt equals A cosine omega t plus phi. In this equation, A, the amplitude of the sinusoid, is a constant. Omega, the radial frequency, and phi, the phase shift or phase offset, are also constant. If we look at this ideal signal in the frequency domain, our pure sinusoid would appear as a single narrow spectral line, with all of its power at one single frequency. A non-ideal or real oscillator signal differs from our ideal signal in two ways. The radial frequency omega is still a constant, but the amplitude and phase offset are both functions of time. In other words, the amplitude and phase of the signal are not constant. In the time domain, phase variations cause a shifting of where the sinusoid crosses the x-axis, a phenomenon often referred to as jitter. In the frequency domain, these variations create sidebands, or skirts, on either side of the carrier. Changes in the phase and amplitude of our signal are both undesirable, but in most cases the effects of phase variation are much larger and more important than the effects of amplitude variations. Phase noise is a term used to describe short-term variations in phase or frequency stability. By short-term, we mean periods of seconds or less. Another way of defining or describing phase noise is random or unintentional phase modulation. Short-term stability, or good phase noise performance, is very important in a wide variety of RF applications, but this short-term stability can be very difficult to obtain, with a substantial cost and complexity often associated with even modest increases in phase noise performance. In order to better understand why it's important to minimize phase noise, Let's look at three of the most common effects of phase noise, namely spectral regrowth, decreased sensitivity and selectivity, and increased bit errors. Before we go on, let's pause for a brief refresher on mixing. A mixer is a device that can be used to move signals from one frequency to another. It does this by combining an input signal with a local oscillator to produce an output that contains not just the original signals, but also signals at the sum and difference of these two frequencies. Mixing is widely used in RF receivers for two reasons. First, it's generally easier to work with lower frequency signals. And second, mixing allows the use of fixed frequency filters, amplifiers, etc. We simply mix the signals down to a convenient frequency for processing. Note that we can use the same process to mix signals up in frequency as well. What happens if the local oscillator has phase noise? This phase noise is also mixed with the input signal, leading to an output whose mixing products are distorted and spread in frequency due to the phase noise present in the local oscillator. This phenomenon is sometimes called spectral regrowth. Let's look a little bit more closely at phase noise and spectral regrowth, this time with a wider bandwidth signal, such as the kind used in LTE, 5G and R, Wi-Fi, etc. If our local oscillator has low phase noise, the signal will be mostly contained within its assigned channel, with very little power leaking into the adjacent channels. But as the level of phase noise increases, we see the signal becoming wider and spreading further into these adjacent channels. 
and at high levels of phase noise, this regrowth or adjacent channel leakage can become quite severe, causing significant interference. Phase noise can also cause problems due to something called reciprocal mixing, which arises in situations where we have a small wanted signal, here the signal in green, and a large adjacent unwanted signal, here the signal in red. Mixing these signals with a relatively pure local oscillator, we can move the signals down to an IF, or intermediate frequency, for processing. The IF filter only selects the desired signal and rejects the larger unwanted signal. However, if our local oscillator has excessive amounts of phase noise, this will spread the energy from the adjacent unwanted signal into the IF filter, making it difficult or impossible to recover the smaller signal. Local oscillator phase noise, therefore, should be kept as low as possible, since this phase noise reduces both the sensitivity and selectivity of a receiver. Phase noise can also create problems for communication systems that use some form of phase modulation. Most modern high data rate wireless technologies use modulation schemes that are based on phase and amplitude modulation, for example, APSK or a QAM. These modulation schemes are often represented using so-called constellation diagrams, which are polar diagrams where each point in the constellation is a symbol with a unique amplitude and phase. Phase noise causes a rotation of the constellation, with higher levels of phase noise creating greater rotation of the points. If this rotation becomes high enough, it's possible for one symbol to be mistaken for another, and this leads to bit errors or a higher bit error rate. Now let's look at how phase noise is measured or analyzed. There are two types of instruments that can be used to measure phase noise, spectrum analyzers and phase noise analyzers. Outwardly, these instruments often look very similar and display results in similar ways, but there are important differences between them. Spectrum analyzers are the traditional tool used for measuring phase noise. Although it's possible to measure phase noise by hand, in almost all cases, phase noise measurements on spectrum analyzers are performed using an automated phase noise measurement application, or option. The greatest advantage of using a spectrum analyzer is that it's a flexible, general-purpose instrument that can be used for a wide range of other measurements. A phase noise analyzer, as the name implies, is an instrument primarily designed to measure phase noise. They usually have higher speed and sensitivity than traditional spectrum analyzers, the increased sensitivity being mostly due to the cross-correlation method, something we'll cover a bit later in this presentation. In addition, many modern phase noise analyzers also have other functionality that's helpful when testing oscillators, such as the ability to measure amplitude noise and spurious emissions, or the ability to characterize voltage-controlled oscillators. We'll start by looking at the spectrum analyzer, or direct spectrum method, since this will also help us understand most of the basic phase noise measurement concepts and measurement results. The first step in the spectrum analyzer method is measuring the power of the carrier, that is the nominal oscillator output signal, as an absolute power in dBm. We then move to a given frequency offset from the carrier and measure the noise power within a 1 Hz bandwidth. We then subtract the carrier power from the noise power, and the result is phase noise in units of dBc per hertz. Note that these values will always be negative. In almost all cases, this process is repeated at different frequency offsets from the carrier, and the results will usually be different at different offsets, generally decreasing the further away we get from the carrier. In the example we just looked at, phase noise was measured at a positive frequency offset from the carrier. Since the side bands created by phase noise are usually symmetrical around the carrier, the measured phase noise will be the same for a given positive and negative offset from the carrier. Here, phase noise is minus 70 dBc per hertz at both plus 10 kHz and minus 10 kHz offsets. Therefore, phase noise is normally only measured on one side of the carrier, and this is called single sideband phase noise. By convention, Positive offsets, or the upper sideband, is used when measuring and reporting phase noise. Single sideband phase noise is measured and plotted over a defined offset range, in this case, 1 kHz to 1 MHz. A logarithmic scale is used because it covers a wide frequency range, but also has finer resolution close to the carrier. We're often more concerned with close-in phase noise than phase noise at larger offsets. Since phase noise is undesirable, Lower values in our phase noise plot mean better phase noise performance. 
Note that many phase noise plots have distinct regions in which the phase noise graph has different slopes. This is due to the fact that the causes or sources of phase noise are often different at different offsets from the carrier. In addition to the single sideband phase noise plot that we just looked at, another common way of representing phase noise measurement results is something called spot noise. Spot noise is nothing more than the phase noise measured at specific frequency offsets. By default, these offsets are usually so-called decade offsets, that is, offsets which are powers of 10, such as 1 kHz, 10 kHz, 100 kHz, etc. It's also possible to measure spot noise at arbitrary, user-defined offsets. Spot noise is commonly given in table form, and is most often used to verify that phase noise at a given offset is below a specified threshold. Although it presents results in the same way, a phase noise analyzer measures phase noise differently than a spectrum analyzer. The first difference is that phase noise analyzers measure phase noise directly, typically using a special digital phase demodulator. The other important difference is related to the cross-correlation function in modern phase noise analyzers. In cross-correlation, the incoming signal from the DUT, or device under test, is routed through two identical measurement paths in the instrument. These identical paths have independent oscillators, each of which has slightly different, or uncorrelated, phase noise. These two paths feed a cross-correlation function that can then remove the uncorrelated phase noise generated by the instrument, allowing a more precise and more sensitive measurement of the phase noise in the signal from the DUT. Increasing the number of cross-correlations further increases the sensitivity, allowing the measurement of extremely low levels of phase noise. Phase noise analyzers, therefore, have the advantage of being much faster, especially when measuring close-in offsets, as well as having much greater measurement accuracy and sensitivity. In this presentation, we've covered the fundamentals of phase noise, but there are many other types of phase noise and phase noise-related measurements. Integrated phase noise measurements involve integrating over some portion of the single sideband phase noise curve. Residual or additive phase noise measurements are used to determine how much phase noise is added as a signal moves through a device. Measuring the phase noise of pulse signals such as radar presents special challenges, as does measuring amplitude noise separately from phase noise. Allen variance is a measure of long-term frequency stability, and finally, VCO characterization is used to determine additional key properties of voltage-controlled oscillators. Let's end with a brief summary of what we've covered. An ideal oscillator produces a signal whose frequency, amplitude, and phase do not vary over time. Phase noise describes the short-term variations in the frequency or phase of signals produced by real-world oscillators. For a variety of reasons, phase noise is undesirable, and phase noise measurements are used to quantify the phase noise performance of devices or systems. The results of a phase noise measurement are typically given in the form of a single sideband plot, which shows phase noise as a function of carrier offset, and a spot noise, which is a measurement of phase noise at specific offsets. Two types of instruments are used when measuring phase noise. Traditional spectrum analyzers often support automated phase noise measurement personalities in addition to their many other functions. Dedicated phase noise analyzers contain special hardware designed to make very fast and very accurate measurements of phase noise, and they also frequently incorporate a cross-correlation function in order to reduce the influence of instrument phase noise and maximize measurement sensitivity. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Phase Noise Fundamentals. Thanks for watching.